Hello everybody, it's Bruce here. Not with so much of one of my instructional Python videos, but something for those of you who are taking CS50P, the Harvard uh, Intro to Programming with Python course, as well as people enrolled in my uh, courses uh, that teach Python at Clark College. So let me get this out there. I see a lot of people, right, you, right, and others who go about solving one of these problems in the, in the module problem set, and you, you're going about it the wrong way, right? So the way I see a lot of you doing this at this time is you read the problem, you code up some stuff, and then you run check 50. And what I'm seeing is a lot of you are not even going through this section right here about how to test. You're not running the Python code yourself. You're going right to check 50. And while that's good, that's kind of, in my opinion, not an optimum approach. All right. So what I would do, right, when I when I do problems, when I solve problems, is yeah, I'll I'll I'll, I'll bring up my editor after reading through the problem. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a section of code in my in my program called an IPO. Okay, and what IPO stands for are inputs, processes, and outputs. And what I do is I'll identify, I'll go through the problem statement. And I'm not going to do one here, but you want to identify what input you need from the, the human, the, the person, and list those things all out. You're then going to identify what particular processes or functions, not Python functions, but things you're going to need to develop in your code, and you're going to list them out. And same thing, like I said, with the input. You're going to list out the multiple things that you need from a person in order to perform whatever processes you need um, to make your, your code work. All right. And then you want to declare, not declare, you want to write out what outputs, you know, what what is the problem, right, expecting, right? And you can see a lot of that, read a lot of that in the text, but you can also see it in the demonstration uh, video clips that are provided in a problem. And then you want to run your Python, well, you want to write your Python code next after you identify all of these things. And what I will typically do when I, you know, code my work is I'll then make a copy or I'll just cut the inputs and paste them down into my Python code. Say this is a main function, right? I'll paste in like the inputs that I need to get from a person, right? I'll copy it. I'll copy it here and I'll put it in my code, right? Like this. And I'll just need to make it a uh, like a comment block, okay? Comment block here, One, two, two, right? And then I'll 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 write out, right? I'll write out all of the code that I need to do to achieve these things, and then I'll do the same thing for the processes and outputs, and that's kind of a, 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 the way a lot of these problems work. And then I'll go ahead and you know write my code you know for the processes and outputs and then I'm going to go to the terminal and I'm actually going to you know run that that program myself I'm 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 just going to see is my code working I'm going to run through the the outputs right that the program expects here under the how to test section and then I'm going to see what's working and not working and Sometimes, right, if, you, if you're at the point where all of this stuff in the how to test is working, right, then, then I'll run check 50, right? I'll take this particular command from the problem and I will go here and I'll run, right, check 50 and see what else, right, what other maybe cases or edge cases that your code may need to look for that you may have forgotten because not 
every single, if, if it works with these things right here, it may not work, right, for the other cases that check 50 may test, all right? So at that point, what I would do, if, if I think my code is working and meeting some of the tests, right, and, and then I go to run check 50 and it's not, I'm going to run check 50 and see what other cases, like I stated earlier, they are expecting, right? What, what edge cases, right? As Professor Malin says. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the results of check 50 and see what particular cases they were testing. And then I will go back into my code and run those manually myself, okay? And see what the the output is i mean it tells you what their 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 the check 50 tests are seeing but you need to see that for yourself as well because you may see some unexpected uh errors or 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 things being calculated or displayed that just aren't right so don't always go for check 50 right away go to check 50 after you're done you know getting your code uh, to what you think is correct, run it in the pipe in the terminal, right in Visual Studio Code's terminal, and if you think you're you're passing all of the tests that are in the problem, then go ahead and run check fifty, and like again see those other ed edge cases, and you know recode and reevaluate your code to see what is working and what is not working, all right? That's just some advice from me, um, and that's my approach, but please, 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 just don't always go to check 50 and see if, if you're working. You need to run the code yourself and see what your code is doing or not doing. Thanks for watching, everyone, and keep up the great work you're all doing learning how to code.